What's up, Internet? Don here from DonDoes30.com, bringing you a Kali Linux tutorial because obviously people have no idea how to use Google. Um, sad but true, and I'll show you exactly what I mean. I've been getting a lot of questions recently about, uh, oh, that's a cool program. Where can I get it? Send me the link. Um, you know, I, I mentioned plenty of times throughout my tutorials that I use Kali Linux. So maybe that's what you should Google. But realistically, what we're going to be doing is going through the steps on how to download Kali Linux, because you can't Google it for some reason. Uh, use the Win32 Disk Imager to write it to the USB. Um, a quick tutorial on how to update your BIOS. And then step four, I guess would be subscribe to my channel. So first of all, um, to download Kali Linux, all you have to do is go to www.cali.org slash downloads. Holy shit, right? Now, there are a bit of a difference here. We've got the Kali Linux 64-bit, the 32-bit, the 64-bit light, 32-bit light, 64-bit mini, 32-bit mini, um, ARML, and then ARM HF. Do not even worry about the two at the bottom unless you're running um, like a, what do you call it? like a tablet processor, things like that. What you want to focus on is up here. And I don't necessarily recommend the light versions because they don't include all of the um, all of the programs that I use. I definitely don't recommend the mini program or the mini options because that really doesn't include a lot and you're going to be manually installing things. The two that you'll want to focus on is the 64-bit and the 32-bit. I wouldn't even focus down here on the VirtualBox images because we're installing this to a USB drive. Um, if you have a 64-bit processor, you could of course download this. My recommendation though is to download the 32-bit processor. Basically because not everybody or not every machine that you're going to be running this on might not uh, have 64-bit. So it's going to be a lot easier for you because the 32-bit will run on both systems. Alright, so what we're going to do let's pretend like we're downloading this okay you'll click on the ISO link or even if you want to get a little bit more adventurous click on the torrent link but the ISO will just download now I've already gone ahead and downloaded it to my computer to use as the example next you'll want to download win32 disk imager you could find that at sourceforge.net slash projects slash win32 disk imager download and install that all right. Now, once it's downloaded and installed, it'll do a little icon here at the desktop. You'll want to run this as administrator. So right click, run as administrator. And we'll click yes. Now, how this works is from the file, we're going to select our ISO file. You may have to go down here and select all files. All right, that's the Kali Linux, the 32-bit that I downloaded. Okay, and then I don't have a USB stick in my drive right now, but on the device, you'll click on that, and from the pull-down menu, you'll select which device you want to choose. All right, and then you'll click on Write. Now, this takes about, uh, could take 10 to 15 minutes, just depending on how fast your write speed is to your USB port, but that will write this image and basically install a bootable Kali Linux image to your USB drive. Perfect. So now what do we do? Well, let's restart our computer. I'm not going to do it here because I'm recording, but you restart your computer and you get into your BIOS, which stands for the basic input output um, system. Now what that does is before even Windows loads, the BIOS runs to check, um, check for your RAM. It, it handles your boot sequence. Um, it handles all, everything that uh, is involved in the initial startup of your computer. Now yours may look different when you get into the advanced BIOS features. This is kind of a uh, general um, general image here. But your first, or your, first, your first boot device should be your USB. Your second boot device could be a DVD or CD-ROM or even if you don't want to do that it could be your hard drive. But your first boot device you're going to want to select USB. And then you'll get out of here by clicking F10 to save it, escape to exit. Then you stick your USB into the port and it boots from there. 
It's that simple. I don't like, um, personally, I don't like running Kali on a virtual machine because there's too many issues when it comes to um, setting up the network correctly so it bridges to your current network. Um, I've had instances where Windows kind of slows down and kind of conflicts with the virtual machine. So all in all, just go ahead and do this. If you have any other questions, which I'm sure you guys are going to do and you don't want to feel like you have to type into Google for some reason, go ahead and comment on the video and ask me. Thanks again. I'll see you guys soon.